At this time of the year, in early summer, gardening is as much about what you take out of the garden as what you put in. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog, and this is the early summer garden tour and tips. And we'll also be looking at the progress of the mini meadow, the two patches of lawn in the front garden, which were slowly transforming from standard lawn into mini meadow. And I have to say the last month, progress has not been particularly straightforward. I'll put links to any resources we mention in the description below and also a timestamp so if you want to jump to any particular part of the video then you can just click on the time. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads once a week with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you want to see the videos when you open up YouTube then click the subscribe button, they're free. And if you want YouTube to tell you when a new video has been uploaded then tap the notifications bell. The Middle Sized Garden is an L-shaped town garden, it's walled, and it's about 100 feet long and 80 feet wide at its widest and 40 feet wide nearer the house. We are in what is considered to approximate to a USDA hardiness zone of 9 because in winter it very rarely drops below minus 6 Celsius, 21 Fahrenheit. But in summer we're much cooler than most USDA hardiness zones of 9. In fact, we're having what's called a heat wave here, and it's about 22 degrees Celsius, and that's really quite hot for us. But this spring has been very cold, and for a while it was very dry. And then suddenly the heavens opened, it rained and rained and rained, and then the sun came out. So, of course, everything is growing like the clappers. And there are so many things that you have to actually look at and simply take them out if they're growing too fast. And of course, the first one is weeds. This is the time of year to really concentrate on weeding because they're growing as fast as they ever will. And kind of, if you get on top of it now, you might have less to do later on in the season. But one of the things I think we all have to recognise about weeding is that no matter how well designed or how low maintenance your garden is, you will always have to weed. I talked about low maintenance plants in a recent video and in order to make the garden easy to run, the designer Posy Gentles had suggested gravel in various places and you very sensibly pointed out that of course weeds grow in gravel. One of the ways to slow weeds down, although it will never abolish weeds, is to use a mulch and that is something you lay on top of the soil and it can be gravel or pebbles, it can be garden compost or, or chopped up bark or it can be a weed suppressant membrane. And garden compost or chopped up bark will actually slowly rot down and they will enrich the soil, so those are good. Gravel and pebbles will still not stop all the weeds. All the mulches will actually cut out the sunlight to the annual weed seeds in the soil. But the perennial weeds will kind of wriggle up, they'll come up any holes or they'll come up round the edges and annual seeds are also always being blown in by the wind or dropped by birds. However, usually when a weed is growing in a mulch, it's quite often easier to pull out. Most gardening friends of mine have found the weed suppressant fabrics really quite disappointing. You lay them out and then you cut holes for plants and the perennial weeds come in, in those cut holes or they escape around the edges. And of course the annual weed seeds do what they do with every mulch is that eventually they just drop in because they're blown in by the wind. So I think we have to just accept that weeding is something we do and it's very much something we do in early summer. There's a video in the description below which is all about weeding but one tip I would definitely say is that if you see a weed just bend down and pick it up there and then if you can. If you've got a small garden that almost may be the only weeding you need. But if you look at a weed and you think, oh God, I must weed on Saturday, well, by Saturday there will be 10 weeds, particularly at this time of year. There are two kinds of plants which save me a lot of time and money, and those are self-seeders and spreaders. But at this time of year, once again, there's no such thing as a no-maintenance plant. You can have a low-maintenance plant. Self-seeders and spreaders don't need to be sown and pricked out and potted on, and uh, they just look after themselves. A self-seeder is usually an annual which grows flowers, turns to seed and dies within one year and then it drops its seeds and it pops back the following year. It's different plants but it's the same kind of plant. And in this garden I've got poppies, I've got the allium self-seed beautifully, I've got something called wild gladioli and something called cerinthi major which has just been amazing over the spring. 
And then when it comes to the plants that spread, these are perennials like Euphorbia robii and daylilies, which I've got here. And they just spread and they fill up every little bare bit of soil. And the Euphorbia has been wonderful citrus green this spring. However, these two, the self-seeders and the spreaders, are stifling some of the plants that I want to look good later in the season, particularly the roses and the dahlias. Roses hate having too much growing around their roots, and in the past I've let the sort of pretty self-seeders and spreaders grow up around the roses and the roses have looked rather sad and their foliage has drooped and it's not been good. So I'm going round every rose and I'm going to pull out the self-seeders, spreaders and weeds around the base, and I hate pulling out plants that are really looking good at the moment, but for the sake of the garden in a few months' time, I have to do that. And dahlias as well. I often leave my dahlias in and I cover them with mulch and then they come back the following year because we do have rather mild winters. However, the self-seeders and the spreaders are covering up these emerging shoots of dahlias and the shadow is giving the slugs and snails a chance to have a nice nibble at them in peace. A few months ago I did a video on what to do with a difficult shady corner and lots of you gave me excellent suggestions and I still haven't really come to a decision. But if you don't plant something up then it does turn into a dumping ground. So I decided the essential thing was to clear this corner away and to plant it up with easy shade loving plants. I got some plants from friends. Comfrey, for example, grows extremely well under the shades of trees and a friend of mine was clearing them out and she just literally dug up some roots and handed it over to me with the leaf and the root and I just literally made a little hole in the soil and then pushed it in there. I will have to keep it well watered until it gets properly established. I bought a single very young silver birch because we have two or three silver birches in the garden already and I think that will look beautiful and will help bring that corner into the rest of the garden. My friend also dug up some Saxifrage London Pride, which is another good shade-loving plant, and another one that you just dig it up and it's got its little leaves and its rosettes, and you just literally poke them into the ground and keep well watered. And in fact, these particular Saxifrage London Pride have done very well because after I planted them, Lottie went and dug them up again and I had to replant them. So you can see how well they've done. It's a bit late now to be digging up and moving plants. It's something that's best done in spring or autumn. But when you do, do think about offering the, the plants to friends, the extra plants to friends, or indeed, if friends are digging up their plants to divide them up, then that's always an opportunity to get free plants for you. And now for the mini meadow. In the front garden, we have two patches of lawn and we have decided to turn these into a meadow slowly. We decided not to dig up the lawn and then replace it with meadow glass, grasses because it's home to a lot of ivy mining bees. And there's quite a lot of wildlife that already enjoys the front garden and I don't want to destroy a habitat in order to create a wildlife habitat. It just doesn't make sense. So we are letting an ordinary lawn grow, but that creates certain problems and it does look quite untidy. The two little patches of mini meadow have become to look rather random and it looks unkempt, it's not looking as if it's supposed to be a meadow, it just looks like a lawn that nobody's really mown. So in last month's Garden Tips and Tour I asked the advice of Jane Moore, author of Planting for Butterflies and Planting for Wildlife, and she said that one of the things you can do and which is very effective for a patch of wildflower meadow is to make it very intentional either mow the area around it so it looks like well this patch is a wildflower meadow and this patch is ordinary lawn or put some kind of edging in it. So we decided to put edging in it and also to make sure that the borders such as the rose borders were left completely clear of wildflowers and meadow grasses. Roses don't like competition and they would be much happier if they were just in a border on their own. So we bought some ever edge, which is a metal edging that you bury in the soil and it just leaves a very fine line delineating on the top of the soil. And you can mow right up to it or mow over it and it would just stop the grass from spreading without being a very obvious edging. It is quite easy to install, but of course nothing is easy to install if you've never done it before. So while it would have taken professional landscapers just a couple of hours to put Everedge around these two small squares, it took William and David a really long morning. And then, of course, we discovered that a front garden has services running underneath it. And at one point, we hit something that could have been a water pipe. Fortunately, it wasn't. But it is really something to remember when you start to do something in a front garden. 
So it in the end took two mornings to put the ever edge round the two squares and then we used a bark mulch on the borders to delineate them further and also to slow down and discourage weeds although as I said earlier nothing ever stops weeds and I think that looks much better but of course the mini meadow has been quite trampled by the work and at the moment it just looks like long grass which has been trampled. I don't know what kind of wildflowers are likely to come up. I did sow some by seed in the autumn, but I think it's quite, quite possible they've been trampled. And also, if you just throw or even scratch wildflower seed into a lawn, lawn grasses are quite tough and it's quite difficult for those wildflower seeds to come up through them. What you really need to do is to sow something like yellow rattle into the lawn and then they help weaken the lawn. Uh, but I haven't actually been able to get yellow rattle. So many people are doing mini meadow lawns that I can't get yellow rattle. I will get it at some point. And until then, we'll just see what arrives in the lawn. Next month in the Garden Tips and Tour, Jane Moore will be back to have a look at the mini meadow and tell me what else I ought to be doing. But for the time being, we're just going to let it recover from having had lots of sides, 11 boots trampling on it. If you'd like to catch up with the other garden tips and tours, they're in a playlist at the end of this video. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.